always box Orthodox fighters. I would always spy Orthodox fighters. Then all of a sudden, I box a Southpaw. And I come back to the corner after the first round. And I got a different look on my face. I look at the coach. Um, this one's a strange one, this guy is. <laughs> and my coach goes, you do realise he's Southpaw? And I goes, uh, what's a Southpaw? <laughs> and they go, he's punched for, I'm learning this now in the ring as I'm fighting. He's, um, he boxes from the other stance. I goes, oh, so what do I do then? Because <laughs> everything I threw, the stuff came from a different angle. So your brain has a conversation with itself. This is the conflict we, we teach. My brain's going, what just happened? <laughs> that ain't supposed to happen. It's like a car in front of you, if you can drive. You're driving and the car behaves strangely in front of you, then turns left. Then you realize, you moron, you didn't indicate. But you, you went through the same transition. So things are happening, but you can't put your finger on it. So my brain was like having a conflict within the conflict. And I'm like, okay, okay, I came back. Uh, so I'm getting hit here. Yeah, yeah, but he's not, he's not a strong puncher. Uh, that was the kind of, that was the kind of, this other trainer would give me, that my, my coach would have me break things down. I go, okay, um, I'm going to stop him, I said. So I, 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 well, I lost the first round, and the first round, the second round, I went out and stopped him. So I came back home and I thought, so this Southpaw business, <laughs> I'm not going to meet many of these people, because I don't like them. <laughs> As a child, you know what I mean? That's what you would say to people. We've all got skills. It's 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 a it's a natural process of the habits, aren't they? We we create habits. There's no good thing or bad thing in habits, but in in the boxing terms, it was if I perform performed good habits and made them my masters, I no longer have to think about them. So therefore, I'm per, performing with a habit that follows a natural progression. So. With, with, with in the boxing terms, I would throw a punch and most boxers would move to the right or the left. And then they do something that I've already picked up on, they're gonna bring the left hook in. And I'd react to that. But this chap moved back as normal, then stepped to the right. And then threw a different shot altogether. So it was something new, and then you gotta deal with the fact that you're getting hit. So it's, it's food for thought there, and you gotta think about stuff. And like in, the, in my game, you, you soon get motivated to think because you get hit. You know, you can make a mistake in other sports, uh, but in boxing, you get punished for those mistakes. So you have to learn real quick. And, and, and one of the reasons why I learned real quick is I had power and I had fitness. So I could come after you and I could have a tear up with you and I'd get the better of that and I could finish fighters. So I managed to cut corners a little bit there where some people will probably have to go through that longer, probably lose the fight because they're still thinking too much. And you, you can't, it's not natural to be think, to have a new maneuver put into your process takes time to, to, to feed that habit into your system. And, and until it feels natural, it, it, it's a new process. And that's the, the, we've got to keep learning all the time. Every day we're learning all the time in life, in boxing. And as soon as I mastered one Southpaw, they gave me another one who was even better at doing something else as a Southpaw. Then you, you just, the relationships. So you have to feel comfortable within that relationship and, and you've got to balance yourself be it a bit of fighter, be it a sports, be it a, a girlfriend, boyfriend, mother, father. There's, you have to know your place. And I think that's it. You have to know your place. And that's why I call it, you have to champion yourself. Yeah? So losing a fight doesn't mean you're not better than the opponent. It just means you've, you've had to learn something. And on that particular day, in boxing terms, you were unable to... In other words, the fighter wasn't better than you or isn't better than you, but he was able to perform an act or perform a, an exhibition that allowed the judges to see him winning certain events. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you know, he just was able to impress the judges on, on his ability. And I had to work a way around that and understood what was going on. But it's a learning skill. Yeah, and it takes time to, 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 to and most, most people don't like that. You lose, you've lost. I haven't lost, he's better than me. He just was better able to, to dictate in the fight better than me. So since I go home, look at my weaknesses, make them stronger. Kieran Joyce has taken revenge for the knockout last year on a majority decision, and that's a bad blow for Neville Brown and a bad blow for England and for British hopes for the Olympics next year. This will make you laugh. It was a guy called Paul Harding. It was my, I'd won the championships 
I was in the junior ABAs and this chap from Liverpool and trust me, everybody can fight in Liverpool. And my coach was from Liverpool and I think it was a Golden Gloves, I think. I'm not sure what you call it. His name was Paul Harding. Now most guys I box were either skinny, taller than me, shorter, stockier than me. This guy didn't look like anything special. In fact, he looked like me, just no muscle, just bare kid. No muscles ripping, he's just bare chest. So I thought, got this number. Little did I know that his record was championship, schoolboy championships, he's 15, 16. He was 16 just, I was 15, so we're young. And he was something like, I believe at the time, 52 fights, 50, 60 fights, 47 knockouts. So he's a monstrous puncher and he can fight and he knows how to land. So here's where I ain't got a clue what to do. <laughs> so I went out in the first round and no one's told me about this guy. And later on they explained why, because <laughs> they didn't want me to bottle it. So I went out there and I walked into a wall and I had no idea what to do. I couldn't box, I couldn't dance around like Sugar at that time. So I just all I could do is go forward. There was no plan B. It was to go forward. So I was going forward and I walked into every shot there was. Every time I did a little bit of manoeuvre, he knew it. <laughs> he knew what I was going to do before I even did it. And he plastered me. And I went down for the first time. And I remember falling over, going down. And I remember the first fight my mum had been to watch me. So I was like, oh gosh. And I'm hit. my head was hurting. My eye had already shut over in this 30 seconds of manic behaviour, whatever we'd gone on with. And then I remember pushing myself up onto my my feet, my toes, and I was crouched, but I was balancing. I didn't realize at the time I was balancing and I hit the canvas with my hand. And my coach saw this and it was very important that he knew me. Once he saw me going to my feet, crouched, but on my toes, and I was balancing, he knew I was all right. I didn't think I was all right, I thought I was beat. And then I got up and then the count went, one, two, three. This worked in my favor because normally the count's going that way. <laughs> so for the first time, the count's coming at me, but my brain hasn't registered yet, that it's come on my way. So there must be, what, 30 seconds ago, and I looks at my coach, and my coach goes, which means use the ring, keep out the way. And I just went, triggered the habits. Boom, went straight at him, which was not what you're supposed to do. And it was, I, 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 was, I went after him, and I hammered him right into the wall, and I just jumped on him, and the place went absolutely ballistic. And the bell went, and I'd come back to the corner and my coach went, right, we've tasted his, now he's got to taste ours. And I was like going, yeah, pumped up. And like I think it was an incredible hook. Yes, I'm angry now. And I, went, and I went after him and it was the most, I had no option. I couldn't, every time I tried to dance away, he cut me off. I had nowhere to go. He knew exactly how to use a ring and he could hit with both hands. And I just had to fight him. And remember these fights, two minute rounds. So, I stop, I give him a standing count in the second, so we're even now. It's non-stop punching. Third round, he's finally dying out, I'm still going. And I'm basically pounding him in a corner. He goes down again, gets up, and I'm pounding him. And the referee jumps in and stops it, pulls me off of him. And I goes back to the corner, everybody's, it's like I won the world title. Everybody's throwing me up, and, and everybody's like, it was, um, it was like I won a world title. Uh, it, was, it was the hardest fight of my life. My face, and I look back now, it must have been still growing. My head was still growing into my body, so then my, parts of my bones were moved. I could not see with either eyes. They were closed over. I was blue. I was red and blue. It was the most disgusting color it could be. And I remember a blonde, and she was an older lady, a blonde woman, went, that is the best fight I've ever seen in my life. I cannot believe what I've just seen. Liverpoolian accent. And I went, I remember saying to her, and you're never going to see me in another fight like that again. <laughs> That's all I knew then is that it, my face was distorted. It was hurting. And I was the winner. And he was destroyed. And, and I met Paul Harding a couple of years back. Um, and I always wondered why he never took up boxing. And he went down the wrong road. <laughs> and uh, so we didn't see him for like 20 years. And, and absolutely always was watching out for him. Always waiting to hear his name. Because <laughs> I know that monster is someone to avoid. You know what I mean? And obviously he's, he's, he's miffed. So he wants a rematch. That's a fighter and that's a heart of the fighter. But I never saw nothing of him. So he came away from boxing, I suppose, in some ways. And um, 
And people ask me, but that was an amateur fight. That was, that was hard on Steve Collins. That was hard on Steve Collins. Because I had no clue, no skill level yet of how, yeah, I was a champion in my own right, but I had no skill yet of how to uh, avoid shots. And, 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 and no skills. Totally, that was like a, a black belt with a white belt. Yeah, and I just, I had no answer to it. He had an answer to everything. And yeah, that was, that was the hardest fight because it was painful. And that changed my career. Wow. It was my eighth or ninth fight, it changed my career. I then became um, a boxer, <laughs> a box puncher. I wouldn't get into arguments with people. We couldn't, I knew in my head then, we cannot take this kind of punishment every day for the next 10, 15 years. Can't do, can't, I, knew, I knew I couldn't do it. You know, physically, we're made of soft tissue. There's no way. I didn't need nobody telling me this. I didn't, I didn't need a coach saying to me, you don't want to get hits on. I knew. <laughs> My face was, it was, it was um, not a, a good look. To me, it was, if I put it in a layman language, oh, it's like doing a degree. It's like, um, you put a year in, but somebody advances you to the third year. But you haven't had that experience yet. So you, you're asking me questions I should know, but I don't know. I'm still learning them. And so therefore, um, that's the best way to explain it, is that I'm put in. I was, I was, I was eighth fight. This is my eighth fight going into my second championship. And I had no experience to call upon. All I had was drive and, and, and that was everything. That was everything, and, and I couldn't continue life like that against these operators. You just can't. And, and so therefore, I went back to this coach, and I spoke to him, and I explained how I felt, and he, he already knew, because he was a boxer, this is the important part, because he knew how to talk to me, he knew exactly how I felt. He just said to me, he kept shaking his head, and just going, I've never seen nothing like this. I've never seen that kind of, I've seen boxing, and he said to him, so, he was telling me things, but I still find it hard to believe. Because I was just trying to survive. I didn't think I was doing anything good. I was just like, I want this over with. I want to get out of here. I don't care if he wins. I just want the bell to go. And I want to walk away. And I, I really thought about not wanting the box. And you imagine, that's, it's like a bad relationship. And, and you, the idea is, is, is to have that conversation, have that talk, so you don't take <laughs> that relationship, that bad relationship, into another relationship. Yeah, that was that relationship. This is something totally separate. And having them talk with the mentoring, the proper sit down talks, come to my house three or four days after the fight, sitting down with me and, and analyzing the fight and, 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 and my approach towards it. And that was valid. And I think that's for any sportsman. That was so important. And he, he went over and he asked questions and I was scared. Even after the fight, I was still scared at what happened because it questioned in, in the strongest way, how would I, I didn't think I could go any further. If, if, if another 15 year old, 16 year old kid could hurt me like this, what's a man going to do? <laughs> in, that was my thinking. What's a man of, in his prime, I think in your prime is 25. What's a man going to, I'm struggling now at 15. <laughs> what's a man going to do when I hit a guy with man strength? I didn't realize we, we had man strength as kids at that time. But yeah, there were the questions and it was, it was powerful. It was a powerful time because had he not had them talks with me, I'd have gone into the next fight. And you do, if you've had a bad fight last, you tend to bring that stuff to you to the next fight and you turn this guy into Godzilla. You make him better than he is. And that's in your head.